The dollar is under its greatest threat right now from being knocked off its pedestal of being the top dog in the reserve currencies around the world. We are indeed under a, some sort of currency war right now. And there's two things that are affecting it. We'll get into that, but more importantly, we want to find out what happens to gold and silver if the dollar loses its status as the top reserve currency in the world. Let's explore. The pandemic and the war against Ukraine are two things that are having a great impact on the dollar's reserve status around the world. Now, supply chain issues are something that we're still reeling from, from after uh, nations are reopening. China is now feeling the effects of reopening and realizing it's not as easy as they had hoped, the whole world had hoped. And China is an important uh, factor in the world economy, but they're also uh, de-dollarizing. I'm going to be referencing an article here as shared with me by a member of the community from U.S. News and World Report, which is kind of an unusual source for something like this. But this is a, was a really well done piece that we're going to be referencing here. And I want to thank all of you for being here and watching these videos. It really means a lot. And if you are a new subscriber, post down, post down in the comment section below to let me know that you have subscribed so that I can properly thank you. One of the most intriguing trends that we've been seeing is the de-dollarization de movement. You've heard me talk about it here on this channel for quite a number of months. It's an effort by you know a number of countries to reduce the role of the U.S. dollar in international trade. We know the BRICS nations, but there's others known as BRICS Plus that are wanting to kind of join BRICS to kind of make this happen. They want to set up the, these trade channels uh, other than using the Swiss system. Um, so much of the world economy is reshaping itself after the pandemic and, of course, the sanctions against uh, Russia. And so this is what is moving uh, to the dollar being under threat right now. But before we get into what gold and silver is going to do if the dollar res loses its reserve status, let's talk a little bit about the background. Because I think this is the crux of what is mentioned here in this piece. Uh, to, for us to kind of really understand how the reserve currency system came into being in the first place. For hundreds of years, the world has known uh, as a reserve currency, has had its what uh, had their own reserve currency, and different nations and empires took place in part. And it's a currency in which the majority of the world's international transactions are handled. Uh, these were currencies of a series of European colonial, colonial powers, uh, throughout history, including Spain, France, and England at various points. These empires are often backed their currencies with precious metals, typically gold, in addition to the implicit backing of the state. So you have a two-tiered system, gold and fiat. Uh, following the First World War, the British economy struggled to regain its vigor. Much of the world's gold flowed from London to New York for safekeeping, and speculation in the Roaring Twenties that the U.S. equity bull market, America's dominant role in the Second World War, further cemented New York as the financial capital of the world and the dollar as its most important currency. The greenback was formally made the world's reserve currency in 1944 uh, based off of the Bretton Woods Agreement, a status that Sterling had previously held uh, the British pound sterling, that is. And you think about New York and what was built there in the 70s. In fact, by the time that Nixon had closed the, the window, the gold window, in 1971, uh, well, the World Trade Center was had just finished being constructed. Go figure. Um, and world trade being the, the preeminent, preeminent factor here. The dollar had built itself up. The dollar has been backed not by precious metals, but purely on the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. Folks, that is what fiat is all about. Since 1971, numerous people have called for the end of the U.S. dollar as a world's reserve currency. 
but it very well could happen in this decade. It's a real possibility, folks. So why is the dollar king of all the currencies? There's several factors that have led to this. Um, one is the so-called petrodollar. That was in 1973, just um, less than two years after the announcement of closing of the gold window by Richard Milhouse Nixon. And Henry Kissinger, who is still alive today at age 99 years, it was a part of that, uh, saving the dollar, essentially. The vast majority of the world's oil transactions occur in dollars now. As the global oil trade amounts to billions of dollars per day, and all countries need energy, this creates a great deal of demand for dollars to facilitate these transactions. While oil is the most obvious example, uh, with clean energy and other alternative forms of energy, including nuclear coming on board um, more and more, well, the, the oil is becoming less and less um, you know, a factor. And especially here in the United States, when we have uh, domestic oil production and we're a net exporter, at least we were, uh, then the, the idea of the petrodollar is kind of fading fairly quickly. And that, along with it, as well as what I mentioned earlier, is also threatening the dollar as being the top dog in the reserve currencies around the world. But, you know, so oil being the example, there's a broader need for a world unit of exchange. Consider a scenario where a Brazilian farmer sells soybeans to a Japanese condiments company. It's highly unlikely that the Japanese firm would have Brazil's, Brazil's currency, the real, on hand to pay the farmer. Simply, the Brazilian grower is not going to want to accept Japanese yen in exchange for the soybeans. The logical solution is to use an intermediary to convert yen into dollars, buy the soybeans with dollars, and then have the producer convert those dollars into their local currency. To that point, the Federal Reserve estimates that between 1999 and 2019, the dollar accounted for 96% of international trade transactions in the Americas, 74% in Asia, and 79% around the rest of the globe. Wow, that's pretty remarkable. You want to talk about being the overwhelming top and king. The dollar was it, and really it still is, but let's continue. Globally, banks use dollars for approximately 60% of their non-domestic deposits and loans. You've heard me talk about that before. For 60%, adding to all of this, the foreign exchange market today, the U.S. dollar is on one side of almost 90% of all transactions. That's a staggering number. There has been much discussions about trying to create an alternative to a dollar, to the dollar. The euro looked like it might have had a chance um, at the turn of the century when it was created in 2002, but the 2008, actually it was created in 1999, but the vast majority of the nations came on board in 2002. But the 2008 financial crisis and various political and economic shocks in Europe since then have diminished the standing of the central European currency as a world standard. Japan has its own issues with a stagnant economy and shrinking population. China is unlikely to become a reserve currency anytime soon, given the extreme capital controls that its government places on the use of the yuan. But keep, give them, keep, keep in mind that they are, one of, they are the top leader in the BRICS nations, and they want to de-dollarize, and they want to make the yuan the top currency. All the potential candidates are likely too small, uh, to be a reserve currency. The Swiss franc, for example, is known as a stable and well-regarded currency. However, the economy it's tied to, Switzerland, is tiny and would not be able to support the huge capital flows required of an international reserve currency. A little side note, there's more gold per capita in Switzerland than anywhere around the world. But So all the other potential candidates are too small. Uh, so the past year that we've seen has reignited this de-dollarization movement because really in the early 2000s, the euro was supposed to be it. But the period of instability on the monetary front, we have seen the invasion of Ukraine and the reopening of the supply chains it's translated into some direct action. The US dollar now accounts for 58% of foreign exchange reserves held by overseas central banks, which is a now a record low Gold, the most ancient widely accepted international currency, has chipped away 
That's some of the dollar's denominance. That's right, this metal right here, accounting for 15% of reserves, up from 11% five years ago. You've heard me talk about how central banks have been adding much more gold to their portfolios lately. Now, inflation is another issue. Since the 1980s, the United States has maintained a low and steady inflation rate, giving savers around the world the confidence to hold their assets in dollars. Over the past year, however, inflation has soared to previously unimaginable levels, calling into question the security and stability of the dollar for long-term savings and investments. And then we saw the banking crisis that occurred earlier this year with Silvergate, Silicon Valley Bank, Signature, and First Republic, and then the most recent one with the Tri-State Bank in, in Kansas. These crises appears to have largely been contained until recently as the U.S. and Treasury Federal Reserve were forced to step in with unprecedented guarantees in order to quell the crisis. It's unnerving in its own right, but it also chips away at the credibility of the U.S. economy uh, more broadly. Strings of bank failures are what people expect in struggling emerging markets, not the financial capital of the world. And by the way, we have them. Credit Suisse is another one um, that happened in Europe. Against this backdrop, leaders of countries that we've seen in the BRICS, China, India, and Brazil, have been calling for moves to trade directly with each other and their own currencies while cutting the U.S. dollar out of the equation. So, with all this being said, what would happen to uh, the dollar uh, if the dollar loses reserve status? And then what would happen to gold and silver? It's important to realize that the reserve status is something that historically has been gained or lost over a long time horizon. It's unlikely that the world will wake up one day with dollars no longer holding international appeal. Rather, an example such as the British pound, there was a multi-decade process in which it went from the center of the world economics to second tier currency. That said, if the dollar gradually loses its place atop the world financial pyramid, what would happen next? And I believe that is what, how it would occur, by the way. For the U.S., it would likely mean less access to capital, higher borrowing costs, and lower stock market values, among other effects. Having the world's reserve currency has allowed the U.S. to run large deficits in terms of both international trade and government spending. If foreigners no longer want to hold dollars for savings, it would force significant belt tightening at home. And how would that affect gold and silver? All you got to do is take a look at the charts over at Kidco to get your answer to that question. In fact, we did a very recently on a live stream with Aussie Girl and they talked about how in Australian dollars, uh, buying gold and silver is, is quite an expensive proposition. And that would happen with all commodities. Even just speaking of gold and silver as pure commodities, their price would go up, maybe even close to double. So I think that very well could happen. Maybe not exactly double, but they could go up dramatically because essentially the dollar would be worth less for transactions around the world and relied upon less. Right now we have the luxury of being the, uh, running high deficits. And even with inflation where it is, the fact that it, we're scaling back in inflation means that the world still has confidence in the dollar. But nonetheless, if a gradual decline means a gradual increase on gold and silver prices in dollars, and likely it would uh, potentially fall in other currencies or at least stabilize in other currencies, stay the same or maybe dip down a little bit. So Americans would feel the pinch for once of what it means to have high gold and silver prices in dollars, which would mean a lot less than it would be if they were to be go up right now. So let's take for instance, as I look at the charts right now, Gold is trading at $2,958 in Australian dollars. If gold was uh, trading at $2,100 now, with the, gold, with the dollar being the top reserve status, it would mean a whole lot more than it would be if it was trading at $2,958 with being a second tiered currency. And so that gives you an idea, an example of what it would mean, of what gold and silver would do. Higher in price, but it would have much less impact, I think, in terms of um, the value uh, or in terms of the price matching the value. Because really, in the end, what are gold and silver? They are inanimate objects that have preserved their value over the long course of time regarding inflation and everything else. Nothing would change in the end for gold and silver. So that's what happens. 
because gold and silver maintain value. So there you have it. There's your lesson for today. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I want to uh, extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch this video and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.